Hi again everyone, Michael Fudge here with another video in our series on Mastering the SQL Select Statement. This is the fourth installment in the series and we are going to take a look at the order by clause, the top and distinct keywords and how they can be used in combination with the order by clause. As always, you're encouraged to follow along by using the Learn Databases environment and you can learn more about it by clicking on the link below, AppliedDB.com for details. Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the order by clause, and specifically on our agenda, we'll look at how you can sort output using order by in both ascending and descending order, and uh, sort by multiple columns. And we'll look at how this is affected by column aliasing in the projections. And then we'll discover top uh, and how to use top with order by, and we'll also finish up by looking at distinct. So let's get into it. All right, here I am out again in Azure Data Studio. We are using the TinyU database from Learn Databases, and we are using specifically the student's table again. So let's start out with some really simple scenarios. Maybe I want to sort this output by student's uh, last name, then I can do something like this. I could take my select statement and say order by student last name. And that will rearrange the output so that alphabetically the A's come first. You see the student ID is now all jumbled because we are now sorted by this column instead. Okay. Now, maybe you want to sort by two columns. So you can say order by last name. I guess I should do a new one. Sort by last, then first. Select from students, order by student last name, student first name. You can sort by both. Now, I don't know if there's anybody with the same last name in here, but the way that this would work is you would first sort by last name, and then if there were any duplicates, those duplicates would get in turn sorted by first name. So as a way of showing you this, I'm gonna order by year, then last name, then first name. And to make it easy for you to see, I'm going to rearrange the columns as well. Year, then last, then first. And we're gonna do this, select from students, and we're just gonna put down here student ID so you can see that they get jumbled up. And we're gonna do student year name next, student last name, student first name. And then let me just show you what we got. And then we're gonna order them, student year name, student last name, student first name. There, that looks good. And so now you'll see all the freshmen, and then within the freshmen, they're, they're ordered alphabetically by last name and first name, and then you see uh, the graduate students, then the juniors, then the seniors, and the sophomores. And they're sorted alphabetically by last name, then first name. So you might be wondering, well, why isn't this sorting right? You know, this is not sorting by freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And you're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll address this when we get to table joins, but the way that the SQL query use it, does it is it sorts them by um, either gonna be a numerical order or alphabetical order, depending on whether it's a number or char var card type. So if you wanna sort them freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, what you need to do is you know, make a table, which I did here, that has the the years and then how they should be sorted. And then I, I need to combine the two tables together so I can get access to this column. And then if I sort by this column, then they'll be sorted in the right order. So, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. But we'll do that in the next video when we do joins. Okay, just I just want to bring that up in case you're wondering why I did that. So let's dive deeper into it. You can also sort things in, in uh, descending order if you want. So let's put the last names um, first, but do the higher last names first. So let's do that. Let's 
student last name descending. It capitalized that for me, but I don't need to have it capitalized. And now it sorts it in the opposite order. So the Y's are first, and then the A's are last. Okay, so you can sort things in ascending or descending order. Okay, let's talk about order by and column aliasing. So the way it works, as we saw before, and I, I'm gonna give you a whole query now. Let's do, let's take this up here. That way you don't have to watch me type so much. So we're gonna take um, student ID. Let's take student last name. Let's take their first name plus a space plus their last name as student name. And then let's add in student GPA for measure from students. And now I want to um, order by student name. And if you remember, when we had the where clause, you couldn't say where student name like, I don't know. I couldn't say this, excuse me, because this column isn't known at the time of the where. First we do the from, then we do the where, then we do the projection. So at the time we do the projection, it's after where. So we can't do this. We have to say where student first name plus student last name. That is not true for order by, because with order by, it occurs after the projection. So it is one of the last things that occurs. So it does understand this alias student name. That's what's nice about order by. Let's do another example with top. So what does top do? Well, it's easiest to explain top via example. So let's try this. Select top five from students. And I need my, I need my projection still. What you get is the very first five rows out of the student table. Okay, specifically what you're getting are the first five rows in the table output. So if I use an order by here, order by student GPA, I will get the five lowest GPAs. See that? Because I asked for five, and this gives you the five out of the query output. Now it's weird that it's at, it's at the beginning. It would, I would like it here, order by this top five. That makes sense to me, but that's not how it works, okay? And unfortunately, we just have to live with how it works. So the very last thing that occurs is this top five, but we write it you know, right after the word select, which is like bizarre, okay? You just have to get used to that. That's kind of how SQL works at times. It's a little weird with syntax, okay? Okay, so now I've got that working. This is like the, the top five to show lowest five GPAs because we ordered it that way. Let's go this way. Check this out. Select top three columns from students order by student GPA descending. So this is gonna give you the highest three GPAs. Okay, see how that works. And just to show you, if I do the top 10, You'll, you'll see that, you know, not everybody has a 4-0. There's, we eventually break the 4-0 barrier down into the 3 barrier. Okay. 
Now, you might be wondering, well, how can I query this and say, well, I want to show the top GPAs that are bigger than a certain average or, or bigger than maybe the, I want to see them in the top quartile that is a top quarter of all GPAs. You're going to, we're going to do that with window functions. So that's going to be later on. That'll be a, another um, video, but we'll get there, right? We're mastering the statement. You got to learn all the bits before you can master it. Okay. So that's top. Remember top affects the, the, the rows that you see in the output based on the results of the query. So really it occurs last. It's the very last thing that happens after you've got your query all made. And then it says, just give me 10 of them. And to show you that, right, I just see 10 of them here. Those 10. Let me take that top 10 out. Let me take that top 10 out. And now you're going to see all of them. See, there's 10 of them. And then there's the rest. So it's really taking the exact same output and just <clears throat> truncating it down to 10. That's top. Let's talk about distinct. So the distinct keyword will drop any duplicates from the output. So in this particular example, because we're including the primary key, there will not be any duplicates, right? But let me just grab here this student year name, because if I just do that, If I just grab student year name, you'll see that there's a lot of duplicates in here, right? There's one row for every actual student in the table. Maybe I just want to see which year names are used by these students, right? So that's where distinct comes in play. All distinct does is it takes the output that you see and removes any duplicate rows. That is, it removes any rows that will violate entity integrity in essence, right? Because we have no entity integrity in this output because sophomores here and sophomores here and sophomores here, and I can't get to one of these sophomores declaratively. Distinct will, again, prune the output to only unique values. Now, it goes after select, but really it would be nice if it was down here because it's, it's one of the very last things that happens in the output. But it goes here, unfortunately. And so there you go. You just get distinct values among the output okay you can use distinct with order by as well so i could i could take this same you can sort and with distinct you know order by student gpa i don't know I, get, or I would student your name, student your name. You want to probably sort by what you see, right? Now, what is really happening here? This is important to understand. What is really happening here is you're getting this output. And then distinct is getting rid of any duplicates so that there's only one value for freshman, one value for graduate, one value for junior. That's what's happening, okay? It's not doing distinct before it does order by. It actually is taking that huge output, sorting it all, then using distinct to just grab the unique values, okay? But distinct is an awesome way for you to um, guarantee that your, your query output will have entity integrity. Okay, one last example. You can use multiple columns with distinct. So, so if I said select, from students, and then let's do student, major ID, student, year name. And let's get a distinct. Well, let me just show you this, right? So this is just a combination for every student of their majors. This person's major is three, whatever that is. I'd have to look it up in the majors table. That's the next video. Uh, this student's major is two. Um, but there's a lot of repeating in here, right? So if I use distinct, I can reduce the output to just unique combinations of both. So now there's just 15 rows in this output. Unique combinations of major and uh, year name, unique combinations of major and year name. And you can see in the seniors, um, 
Among major four, there's only juniors and seniors in that major. So not every single one of these uses all five of the possible year names. Okay, so that is order by, top, and distinct.